Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and the iPad got a whole lot more powerful with the introduction of mouse and trackpad support, and there are a ton of different options out there. So we've been testing over the past, you know, several weeks, different mice and trackpads for the iPad, iPad Pro, and here are our findings of your best options for everything that's out there. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, it should come as no surprise that your two best options are going to be Apple's own devices. That includes the Magic Mouse 2 and the Magic Trackpad 2. These guys work easily over Bluetooth and they support the most gestures and the most functionality really out of all the devices here. Not only that, but they have the least amount of lag when interacting with the OS. As we've been using these, these have hands down been the best performance of all of these different devices. There are a lot of great ones here, but they all have small compromises compared to Apple's own. Of course, Apple's own Magic Mouse 2 and Magic Trackpad 2 are also the most expensive, or at least really close to it. Either way, they have been absolutely amazing, and this is what we kind of featured in our previous videos that we talked about. We took a big look at these, all the different features that, or functionality you can use with mice and trackpad, and why they are so important to productivity on Apple's tablets. If you pay attention, you'll notice how little lag there is on both the Magic Mouse 2 and the Magic Trackpad 2. They are both so seamless, they support all these different gestures and multi uh, touch capabilities. They are just great. So if you're really looking for the best, these two are your best option, but we know that not everyone is going to want to go with Apple's options. They may think that Magic Mouse 2 is just super slim and may not be for them, may not be comfortable. The trackpad obviously is not great if you're taking this around a lot. No one really wants to kind of travel with a large trackpad, which is why we have come up with a bunch of other options for you to choose from. But before we get into all of our other third-party options, we had to take just a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Paperlike. Paperlike is a different kind of screen protector. It's basically a screen protector that makes it easier to consume media and create. It has a matte finish on, the, on your iPad, which reduces fingerprints, reduces glare, and makes interacting amazing. It feels so nice to interact with your iPad, whether you're using the Apple Pencil to sketch, to draw, to take notes, or just using your fingers. It reduces the drag and makes it just more enjoyable to use your tablet. It is so easy to put on and it only takes a few minutes. We've been using ours for months now. We've immediately put it on our new iPad Pros when they came out earlier this year and we've absolutely loved it. It really improves the experience of the iPad overall. It just gives a great feeling to the iPad while keeping everything protected at the same time. So if you want to grab Paperlike, you can find more at the link down below in the description. Thanks again for Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Moving on, our first third-party one that we found that worked the best with iPad was the Sateki mouse. So the M1 Bluetooth mouse from Sateki has absolutely been the best performing of all the third-party peripherals that we looked at. We tested them from a ton of different companies, and this one really had the most lag and was most similar in that kind of tracking performance compared to Apple's. We aren't sure what makes the kind of the M1 mouse so special, but it really did perform the best in our testing, which is why it is here first on our list after Apple's own products. So as you can see here, we're just going to move it around a little bit on the screen. You can see how little lag there is to this. There is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit there, just, you know, an iota more than what we're getting from Apple's own devices. But this thing has performed very well. The kind of the only weird thing is just using the scrolling. It isn't as smooth as Apple's with its gestures and kind of flicking. You do have to use that wheel and it's a little bit more kind of manual as you're scrolling up and down. But overall, everything else just worked as it should. Easily get to get all those multi function controls, opening control center, getting back to the home screen, opening up slide over, everything else just worked as it should. So as far as third party ones, the Sateki M1 mouse was the best performing, had the least amount of lag from all the third party ones in our initial testing. The next mouse that we are going to recommend after the Sateki M1 is going to be the one that we recently reviewed, which is the MX Master 3 from Logitech. This thing is just a beast of a mouse. There are so many things that it can do. It looks amazing. It is so comfortable to hold in the hand. And of course, it is USB-C. Uh, it works great on your Mac as well as over here on your iPad. It does have more functionality on the Mac side of things, which is 
if you're going to be using it on the Mac, you're really getting the most out of it because of all the different multifunctions that it can do with the Logitech software over on the Mac. But if you're going to use it on your iPad, there is no harm in that. It works great. Uh, everything about it is fantastic. I love the scroll, we scroll wheel. It is very textured. It is metal, has a good weight to it. And with that little button in the back, just click it and it goes from kind of notching to a completely free smooth roll so just a few things there that we liked about it overall it has been a great mouse to be able to use it has a few additional buttons like being able to access the uh, multitasking menu or jump back and forth between the last apps when you press down on the side button it's kind of like the one below your thumb just open an app up press down on that and it'll go ahead and jump you to your last app or i believe you can hold onto it to open up like the tab menu to switch between apps that way so you can hold and mouse between or just click it once with your thumb and jump back and forth between two apps. So it tracks fairly smooth, it has an additional functionality, and overall just a well-built and very comfortable mouse. iPad is clearly meant to be a portable device, which means we needed an absolutely portable mouse on the list. And we found fewer more portable than the Microsoft Arc. So the Arc mouse is very cool, it's got kind of the silicone body in the back with a clicker up front, and actually snaps down. So it snaps down and when you fold it all the way down, you put it into that arc, that's what turns it on. So when you lay it flat, it's off, and when you put it into the arc, it snaps right in. It's pretty comfortable to hold onto, and it's just so slim to take around. There is a tiny bit of lag here. It's definitely not perfect, that's why it's not higher up on our list, but we really didn't have too much of an issue with it. It was still a nice option to have around. Uh, we love the portability as well as the functionality. There's just, it's always those small things, these third-party mice, that it's kind of really hard to beat with Apple. As you can see a little bit of that lag as we kind of zoomed out of that photo. And as we're trying to scroll here, you notice it just kind of stutters a little bit. It's not perfectly smooth as Apple's were. So it's really the scrolling, I think, that is our biggest hiccup. And there's a small little delay in that tracking, a little bit more than the Sateki M1 that we looked at first on our list. As you can see, there's some over-scrolling issues here present, which is kind of on the iPad OS side of things. But as we went towards the top, it kind of just moved things way too far down. So those are things to look out for, but hopefully iPad OS will fix some of those. Uh, but overall, great mouse overall to use with our iPad. Here's another one that is very unique and surprisingly works pretty well with our iPad. Now, this is actually the Logitech K830 Media Keyboard. It's great for using with Android or Windows or your uh, smart TVs that can use a mouse or keyboard. Now, notice it is a Windows keyboard, so it does have that Windows key, but it actually combines both that trackpad and the keyboard. Now, if you use that window key, you can use it as the command key. Just something you have to be aware of. It still works as normal, so you can, you know, command tab to jump through your app switcher. You can command home to go to the home screen. All those keyboard functions work. And on the right-hand side, we have an integrated trackpad, and it works just like any other trackpad. So there is a tiny amount of delay, like we see with some of the other mice on the list, but overall, it works very well. And I like this because it's a one single device. You literally have one device that you can bring with you that gives you an external keyboard and that external mouse, that trackpad, to use with your iPad. So this is a good one to carry with you. And of course, prop your iPad up onto a little stand, and boom, you kind of got a desktop-like experience. It works really well when you're buying one device that kind of brings everything together versus buying two devices separately. So if you're looking for something that combines that keyboard and that trackpad and you want something separate, this is a good option. For very affordable options, we picked up the Logitech M535. So this is really just a low cost option mouse. There is a little bit of lag to it, but we tested it, it works, it's reliable enough. Uh, this is a good one if you just want something kind of cheap that you can bring around uh, for when you need it, but you don't want to spend all the money on some of the more expensive options we looked at on the list. this list. And believe us, there are some expensive options here. Now, really those are the best ones on the market, but we want to kind of mention just a few other ancillary options that you could pick up. Of course, one being the Magic Keyboard. This thing is expensive. It is really expensive, but it is a very functional device. We love the additional USB-C port that it brings, and of course it has the same great performance just like Apple's own Magic Keyboard or Magic Trackpad 2 and Magic Mouse 2. So again, just amazing performance here. It works great, all the multi-touch functionality, and of course it's built in to the folio for your iPad. So if you want something that's kind of all-in-one and you don't mind chilling out the change, the Magic Keyboard is definitely something worth considering. The Magic Keyboard though works only with certain iPads, and the same goes for Logitech's Combo Touch. Combo Touch is a great option as well if your iPad is going to support it. We'll put a link down below, you can check out the full review of this thing, which kind of goes into the different iPads that it supports, but it works very well. It's pretty much the 
best experience we've seen overall from a third party integrated trackpad like this. Part of it may be because it's using uh, maybe the smart connector versus Bluetooth, but just great performance and we really enjoyed using this when we did it for our review. So that is another option that you have when looking at third party uh, mice or trackpads for your iPad Pro. So that pretty much rounds it up. We have a ton of options here. Our best options are going to be all of Apple's products. The Sateki M1 is pretty much the best third-party one. That MX Master 3 from Logitech is fantastic and multifunctional. The Microsoft Arc is super slim. Just there's a ton of options here. If you want to grab any of them, you can find the links down below in the description. And let me know your favorite over on Twitter. Hey, everyone. Did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see and follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.